Welcome to Carol and Gary's Sea America Tour. Hello again, everyone. The Combat Aviation History Museum in Mesa was recommended by our snowbirding neighbor Jack from Canada, so Carol and I decided to check it out. The first thing that we saw when we arrived at the museum was information about the Vietnam War Memorial Wall. Officially, the Vietnam War lasted from November 1, 1955 through April 30, 1975. 58,267 names were inscribed on the memorial wall. Names are arranged on the wall in the order of the dates the people were killed. If there were multiple deaths on the same day, names were alphabetized within that date. There were three sets of fathers' sons on the wall, as well as 31 sets of brothers. There are also eight women's names on the wall. They were all nurses killed while attending to the wounded. The first plane that we saw at the museum was the F-4 Phantom. 5,195 F-4s were built between 1961 and 1990, so it saw service in Vietnam and Desert Storm. The F-4 has a pilot and a radar intercept officer aboard. The F-4 can fly at 1,485 miles an hour and has a service ceiling of 62,000 feet. The F-4 has a range of 800 miles, which meant that it had to be capable of being refueled in the air. The F-4 Phantom could be armed with six barrel and four Sidewinder air-to-air -air missiles. Navy pilot Duke Cunningham and Air Force pilot Steve Ritchie were the only two pilots to achieve ace status in an F-4. This meant that they shot down five enemy airplanes. Next to the F-4 was a Sikorsky H-19 helicopter. These were operational between 1950 and 1976. Maximum speed is 101 miles per hour with a range of 405 miles. This helicopter had no weapons on it and it was the first true transport helicopter. It was used for medical evacuation and frontline cargo resupply during the Korean War. Next to the Sikorsky was a P-51 Mustang. 15,000 of the P-51s were produced between 1942 and 1984. They were flown during World War II and the Korean War. Considered to be a long-range bomber, they had a maximum speed of 437 miles per hour and a range of 1160 miles. Mounted with four M2 Browning machine guns and 1,880 rounds of ammunition, the P-51 Mustangs were responsible for almost half of enemy planes shot down during World War II. A B-17 bomber was parked in the hangar, undergoing routine maintenance but due to its size and position I wasn't able to get much of a picture of it in the hangar so here's a picture from the internet. The B-17 was developed as a strategic bomber in the 1930s. Legendary for its ability to sustain heavy damage and its nearly self-sufficient firepower, the B-17s were most often used for daylight raids over Germany during World War II as well as disrupting enemy shipping in the Pacific. Several gun turrets were mounted around the plane to help ward off attackers. This is the tail gunner who was responsible for protecting against enemy planes attacking from the rear. This person was able to lie down and swivel to shoot at enemy planes. There was also a gunner in front of the plane, but I wasn't able to get a picture of that area. And finally, a gun turret was mounted on top of the plane. This is the cockpit of a B-17 bomber. This is the inside of the plane looking toward the back. I was able to see from underneath where bombs were mounted. 50 caliber machine guns were mounted inside of the plane with access through windows for additional protection. Planes were often named and a sexy picture painted on an exterior. This B-17 was named Sentimental Journey and is one of ten still flying. In fact, you can schedule a ride on this historic airplane, but more on that later. Sitting just outside of the maintenance hangar was a B-25, but unfortunately I wasn't able to get a good angle again for pictures. What interested me about this plane was the vertical pieces on the tail, but I cannot find anything describing why this was done. 
The B-25s were medium-range bombers with a 230-mile-per-hour cruising speed at 13,000 feet and a range of 1,350 miles. The B-25 had a crew of six people, the pilot, co-pilot, a navigator who was also the bombardier, a turret gunner who was also the engineer on the plane, a radio operator who was the waste gunner, and a tail gunner. The majority of B-25s were flown against Japan during World War II. Some B-25s continued in service until the 1950s in a variety of training, reconnaissance, and support roles. This is the bomb storage area of a B-25, looking into the bomb bay with its doors open. This B-25 had the nickname of Made in the Shade. Sitting near the B-25 was a bright yellow twin-engine Cessna T-50 Bobcat, assembled in 1942. This plane had a cruising speed of 165 miles an hour and a range of 750 miles. The T designation means that this plane was used as a trainer for new pilots. My old subscribers may recognize this plane as the plane flown by Kirby Grant in the 1950s television show Sky King that aired between 1951 and 1959. This is a Lockheed PV-2 Harpoon, also known as a B-34. It was used primarily by several U.S. allies during World War II under a Lend-Lease program. Armed with search radar, it could be armed with bombs and high-velocity rockets. The U.S. Navy credits this model of plane with the location and sinking of four submarines during World War II. This is a C-47 Skytrain, first introduced in 1941. Initial military version had a crew of four people, the pilot, the co-pilot, navigator, and radio operator. During World War II, the armed forces of many allied countries used a C-47 for transporting troops and cargo. It had seats for 27 troops. Some of the C-47s were used as aerial ambulances and could transport 18 wounded soldiers with a medical crew of three. Here is a blurry picture of the passenger area of a C-47. This is a Bell OH-13E Sioux helicopter used by the U.S. Army for medical evacuation of wounded soldiers from the battlefield to MASH units during the Korean War. Litters were mounted on the outside of the helicopter to carry the wounded. This is an F-86 Sabre. It was also used during the Korean War. During this time, the North Koreans, with help from the Russians, were flying the MiG-15. The MiG-15 could climb and accelerate faster than the F-86. It also had a better turning radius above 33,000 feet. The MiG had more powerful weapons because it was designed to shoot down bombers, not engage in dogfights. The American Sabre had better gun sights and was a better plane below 26,000 feet. Pilots on both sides tried to use their aircraft strengths to their advantage and avoid confrontations with the other side that put them at a disadvantage. What gave the F-86 the greatest advantage over the MiG-15 was pilot training. One of the last planes that Carol and I saw was the MiG-21. The MiG-21 has a top speed of 1,386 miles per hour at 36,000 feet. The museum said that the MiG-21 was capable of flying at Mach 2.1, which I thought was a math error until I looked on the internet after we got back to the motorhome and found that the speed of sound is not a constant but depends on the altitude or actually the temperature at that altitude. More MiG-21s have been produced than any other jet fighter in the world. The MiG-21 was the Soviet Union's first Mach 2 capable fighter and saw frequent action against American forces during the Vietnam War. Well that wraps up our trip to the Commemorative Air Force Museum in Phoenix. But before I go, I mentioned earlier that you could schedule a ride on the B-17 bomber. The B-17 and five other historic planes are still available and capable of taking people for rides. Rides are booked through the Commemorative Air Force Museum website. Hope that you enjoyed this video as much as we enjoyed climbing around and taking pictures. If you like this video but have not yet subscribed, please do so to be notified of future videos and feel free to share with your friends. Thanks for watching.